As I was preparing all week, praying about what to share with you today, a song and a scripture kept coming to mind. And so I would like to read my text out of Luke chapter 2 and verse 10. It's a very familiar verse to all of us, especially at Christmas time. Luke chapter 2 and verse 10. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Amen? Aren't you thankful that there is good news? That God has something wonderful. He says, don't fear. Don't be looking on that stuff that you could be all fearful and worried about. And how is this going to work out? And how is life going to play out? He said, don't fear. Look at something else. I want to bring you some good tidings of great joy. And it's not just for you. It's for everybody in the whole wide world world. Good tidings of great joy. And our text today is the basis for a very popular Christmas carol. I'm sure many of you know it. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. Why? To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. And that is my message today, good tidings of comfort and joy. And one of the most interesting lines in this song is the very first one, and that is, God rest you, merry gentlemen. And this is like written in the 1600s, and we don't talk like that. I don't go up to Brother Herring and say, God rest you, Brother Herring. He said, I can. God rest you, Brother Herring. But the song, so we don't understand. Does it say, God rest ye, merry gentlemen? Does it mean, God rest ye, merry gentlemen? Does it mean, God rest you, merry gentlemen? But I believe it means, God rest for you, merry gentlemen. There's a God rest. There's a God rest. And that is our great Christmas gift. And I want to present that concept to you today. God rest is the peace. There's a peace that came down at Christmas. God rest is peace. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 14, the angels were singing and they said, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. As I was riding into church and I was discussing this with Bill, I read that out loud and I was like, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. I was like, did you ever notice that the glory to God comes first and then the peace on earth <laughs> for men? We've got to have our order right. We can't have peace in this world if we're not giving God the glory first. We've got to have our priorities right. But God wants his people to have peace. But you've got to give him a little glory too. <laughs> Amen. There is a peace. And it's a completeness. Brother Dorjalini was talking about, about the bipolarism that takes place in our world, the, the fractions and the, the, the factions and the schisms and the divisions, and, and, and that's not the will of God. We serve one God. He's a God of wholeness. He's a God of completeness. He's a God who heals divisions, a God who makes things right and complete and at peace and perfect. And there's a rest that's part of the Christmas story. And it's that quietness of the soul. There is a place that God wants to take us. He doesn't want you to visit there. He wants you to live here. There is a place where God wants his people to live. It's a kingdom of peace. It's ruled by the prince of peace. How are we supposed to greet each other? Peace be with you. Shalom. 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 Peace be with you. God wants 
his people to live in a kingdom of peace. And that means there's no striving there. We strive in this world, but in the church, we're not supposed to be striving. We're supposed to be walking in agreement with God, which means we're walking in agreement with each other because he's not leading us in different directions, is he? There's a rest that means that absence of striving and that absence of fear. And God wants his people to live there. An absence of fear and an absence of striving. The song says, God rest ye merry gentlemen. And there's a lot of merrymaking in the world today. There's a lot of merrymaking at Christmas time. There's a party here and a party there. And there is people making merry all the time. But that is not what God, the type of gift God wants to impart to his children today. He wants you to be joyful. But this merrymaking, <laughs> the world is all about eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you may die. But that's not my life. I'm not all about this life. I hope you're not all about this life. What can I have today that's going to give me pleasure for today? Because God knows I could do drop dead tomorrow. What can I consume? What can I take? What can I drink? What can I eat? What can I buy? What pleasure can I take and indulge in in myself so I can make myself merry? God, rest, peace, wholeness, absence of striving, quietness of the soul. God has that rest for you. You don't have to be involved in that merrymaking. I believe that walking with God is a joyful walk, even in its ups and downs of life. But we're not called to make ourselves merry. The Bible says, not to be drunk with wine, but to be what? Filled with the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And who is that Spirit? He's the Comforter. He's the God of all comfort. If I have the God of all comfort in me, I don't have to go into these other sources to try to find peace, to, to try to find comfort, to try to find fulfillment. I have it. It resides in me, and I reside in him. And it's a beautiful way to live. God wants us to have his peace. There's a song that's been replaying in my mind over and again over the last few weeks, and it's a song that I hadn't thought of in a long time. And as it is resurfaced here and there, the Lord has just recalled to me how wonderful his peace is. No matter what we're going through, we can have the peace of God. The peace of God is with us on the mountain, and the peace of God is with us in the valley. It's not something that we can manufacture. It's not something that we fake it till we make it. It's a gift from God because Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. My peace, I give it to you. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. In fathomless billows of love, peace, peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father above, sweep over spirit forever I pray in fathomless billows of love 
when we have that peace, when we're at one with God, we experience the love of God, the waves of the love of God. Waves come in and they have highs and they have lows. They, water can't move, current can't flow. Nothing's going to move and flow in this world without the ups and the downs. But the peace of God is there. It's abiding. Let nothing you dismay. Tidings is an old-fashioned word for recent news. It means I got a scoop and it's good news. If in the 1600s when they wrote this and they used that language, if somebody was to come up to you and say, Kevin, I greet you. Good tidings. I've got good tidings. That means I'm a messenger and I got some good news to tell you. And that means Gavin is going to have an expectation. All right, she's going to tell me something I want to hear. The good tidings is good news for everybody. It's for you. And God wants you to be receptive to it today. Don't put any walls up. Don't resist. God wants to share something with you today. The good news, the good tidings is that Emmanuel, God is with us. God is with us. He's in us. He's among us. He's connecting us. In the Old Testament, the good tidings always referred to more general things, usually having to do with God's kindness and the coming of the Messiah. But in the New Testament, when we already have experienced the good tidings is the kingdom of God, glad tidings of the kingdom of God and salvation through Jesus. Good tidings, I'm bringing it to you and your kin. Good tidings this Christmas. And for a happy new year. That's what I'm here to tell you today. I'm here to tell you and remind you about the good news and that God wants to give you something that's going to make you glad right now and all the way into next year. Who wants to vote for a happy new year? A blessed, prosperous 2019. Hallelujah. That's what I'm praying for. That's what I'm praying for. The Christmas season, oh, social media has changed our lives, hasn't it? We know about every tragedy in the world. They're coming through our news feed. They're coming through the post. And there are people here and there and right in this congregation that have suffered this year. Christmas season, it, the good news does not deny the legitimate feelings of grief and the challenges of life and the struggles that God brings our way, but it also doesn't neglect to celebrate the true pleasure that God can bring into our lives. God has good tidings, tidings of comfort and tidings of joy. And wherever you are this Christmas season, God has a gift for you. He'll be whatever you need him to be. But the really awesome thing is, is that he can give you both at the same time because the kind of joy he gives is not contingent on circumstances. It's contingent on his presence. Today, God is presenting his Christmas gifts wrapped in swaddling clothes. The peace, the joy, the comfort that we need, joy for the world. It was offered only through Jesus, and that's still the only way we're really going to get it today. But when we have Jesus, we have access. Aren't you thankful when you have Jesus? We have access to all of those beautiful gifts. Because what is the kingdom of God that he has promised to us? It isn't about that merrymaking. It's not about what we eat. It's not about what we drink. It's not about those things that we consume our, to give ourselves pleasure. It's about righteousness. That being right with God, that's what that peace and completeness is all about. And it's about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We don't get it if we're not in the Holy Ghost. 
If we want the gifts, we've got to have the gift giver. We've got to have the spirit of the living God, the spirit living inside us, abiding in us. It brings us that wholeness, and we can't be divided. We've got to give all of ourselves to him. I was thinking about this. You know, we love to quote, Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one. And I love that. I'm so thankful. I remember when I came to understand who Jesus was. He was God. Jesus is God. God came. God did that for me. Wow. I remember. Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one God. And yes, I love to say that I'm thankful for the revelation. But what does it say after that? If you believe that, then this is what you're supposed to do. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. God wants all of us with all our souls. If we want all of God, <laughs> we got to give him all of us. We can't be divided. I want his heart, I want his affection to be on me, but I'm going to offer him a divided heart. I want his strength. Hey, God, I got a problem. Can you intervene for me? I need your might. I need you to reveal your right arm, your power right now in my situation. Well, are we giving him our strength? Are we living our lives for him? <laughs> I wrote in my notes, I typed it in in the car on the way here. I was like, God's saying, you want my heart, give me yours. You want my strength, give me yours. If we want the beautiful gifts that God has for us of his comfort, his peace, and his joy, we have to commit to him as much as we want him to commit to us. We have to repent if we need to of merrymaking, and there are times we all do it. Every one of us, every one of us have times that we've chosen pleasure for self over what we should have at the moment. There's nobody that's innocent and nobody that's guilt-free except by the blood of Jesus. When we repent, when we turn away from our merrymaking, from our choosing what to take for ourselves whatever we want instead of serving the Lord our God. We have to choose to make ourselves one with God. I have to choose to agree with God. I have to choose. He's, he tells me some things in this word. He says, this is what I like. Can you walk this way with me? Let's go over here together. And I choose to be with God by my actions and by my choices. Or, but I can divide myself. I can cause a crack. I can cause that to happen by my own choices of choosing merrymaking over God rest. But peace doesn't mean that everything's going to be easy. Jesus said, you can just expect problems in the world, right? <laughs> it's going to happen. You know, somebody in here is probably going to blow a tire in the next sometime or another. And somebody else, something's going to happen. Life just happens. Things are still going to be hard. Expect problems. But I want to have you expect something else. I want the, you to expect that the God of peace is going to be there with you even when the tire blows. Amen, Brother Gavin? Even when the tire blows, amen, God is with us. Peace is agreement, agreeing with God. God, I'm going to agree with you with my mind. God, I'm going to agree with you with my soul. I'm going to agree with you even with my physical body, the places I go and the things that I do. We live in a world that lacks peace, but I'm here today to bring good news, good news of great joy. God has made a way, and he has come so that we could live in his peace and his joy.
and with his comfort. We won't go into the whole story of Cornelius, but you know most of you the story of Cornelius. He was not a Jew, but he was a God-fear, and he, he prayed, and he, he did good things. He was a good man, and he loved God, but he also knew, I don't have enough. There's something missing. Have you ever been there? He had faith, but there was something that was missing. And he went, and, and Peter came and, and ministered to him, and there was also an angelic messenger involved there. But in Acts chapter 10 and verse 36, Peter was talking to Cornelius and all his family, and, the, and he said that the word was sent to Israel first. The word, the word was made flesh and sent to Israel first. Jesus is the word that, was, that preached good tidings of peace. This, the language of this verse is a little challenging to understand, and so I want to read it to you in the Amplified, and I want to read it as with the excitement that Peter seemed to have when he was telling them about this message. Can you imagine if, if God led you to a, a group of people who were hungry for, for uh, a full revelation of salvation, and, and, and God led you to reveal Jesus to them, the excitement? God was doing this with Peter, and Peter the, the message version puts it this way. Peter fairly exploded with his good news. It's God's own truth. Nothing could be plainer. God plays no favorites. It makes no difference who you are or where you're from. If you want God and you're ready to do as he says, the door is open. The message he sent to the children of Israel that's that word that he sent to the children of Israel. That through Jesus Christ, everything is being put together again. Well, he's doing it everywhere, among everyone. The good news is here. Jesus came. He went to the cross. He made the way. The power of God filled the place when the people heard the gospel and they responded to it and they received gifts. They received the gift of the Holy Ghost. They began speaking in tongues and they were baptized in Jesus' name. That's how they responded when they heard the good tidings, when they heard the gospel message. They're born by the water of the Spirit and then they have access to those gifts. Wherever you are, you have access to God. Jesus came with a very specific purpose. And you and I are supposed to continue in what he began. When he picked up the scroll and he first launched his ministry, he read from the book of Isaiah. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. These are the good tidings that Jesus came to bring to the world. To bind the broken, to set captives free and to open doors, and to trade beauty for sorrow and to trade joy for mourning. To even change your very appearance. Your very appearance from heaviness to praise. You've seen people. You know people they've just come out of the prayer room. <laughs> you can see the praise on them. And you see other people as they're shuffling into the prayer room. <laughs> the heaviness that they come in with. God says, I want to trade that heaviness for praise. There's a phrase in the middle of that, 
we don't understand too often uh, the, the acceptable year and the day of vengeance, and that can be confusing. But what that really means is there's a season. There's a time you'll have the opportunity to get things right. But there is going to come a day when the door is closed. So while you have the opportunity, while we have the opportunity, we must open our hearts and respond to the gifts that he's offering to us. There's a joy of God's presence, even in sorrow. Comfort doesn't mean that grief disappears or trials mirac miraculously end or resolve. What comfort means is you're not alone. Baby, you don't have to do it alone. I'm right there for you. I'm going to be in the vigil with you. I'm going to abide with you, and I'm going to be there with you. Comfort means that the love of God is with you, even in your darkest hour. When you put a comforter around you on a cold winter day, it doesn't mean that the, that the weather changed from winter to summer. That means you got something to wrap around you and to keep you warm in the dark and in the cold. We have a comforter, and there's a joy in that. We can have the joy and the comfort when we're in him, in the God of our salvation. I just feel the presence of the Lord in the house today. And I'm going to close this right now. And I'm going to invite you to stand and close your eyes and ask the musicians to come. And I do. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to picture yourself as a child on Christmas Day. And you rolled out of bed. And you realized what day it was. You still have the sleepies in your eyes. And your hair's all messed up. And you're, you don't look like much. But you just don't care. Because today's the day. Today's the day. And, and you see, as you walk into the other room, the tree across the way. And you see the gifts underneath. And you see your loving father with his arms stretched open. Saying, come child, receive the gifts that I've purchased and prepared for you. Our loving Father is standing here today. He's standing. He's standing there with his arms open and his gifts ready. Oh, the Comforter is in the house, and he's here. He's here to make lives whole that have been broken, to come and abide with those who've been grieving to bind up the brokenhearted and to give joy and the oil of gladness. The love of God is here. It flows with the peace of God. It flows from heaven down from the Father. The peace of God is in the house today, and I invite you to come to this altar today. I invite every one of you to come. There's a God rest for you in the house today. There's peace and salvation and deliverance today in the house of God. Jesus said, my peace, I'm going to give it to you. My peace, my joy, I'm going to give it to you. He's the comforter, and he's here in the house today. I want to receive every gift that he's given the gift of comfort and the gift of joy hallelujah peace peace make us whole make us complete oh god in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name hallelujah